He is uh, Gordon Chang, a columnist and author uh, of, of, of the great book, The Coming Collapse of China. And he, uh, he joins us now. Gordon, uh, looking at uh, the events that have played out over the last week or so in the, in, in the wake of the G20 summit in Buenos Aires, we have the arrest of uh, Meng Wanzhou, the, uh, the daughter of the founder of the Huawei Corporation, which has certainly set the Chinese government off. Um, you have uncertainty in the trade negotiations. How do we sort of uh, uh, make sense of this mess that's laying out here on the table that we're trying to, uh, to unpack? How do we do this? Yeah, it's even worse than that, Brett, because on Saturday you had a Chinese Air Force officer at an event sponsored by the Communist Party urge publicly the attack on American vessels in the South China Sea. Um, China challenges us across the board, and we've got no choice but to respond at every point of attack. And, and that means that a lot of our responses are going to collide with each other, just like, for instance, the arrest of Meng Wanzhou, which was just a few hours before the dinner in Buenos Aires that you referred to. So that complicates the trade truce, as it's now called. Um, but we had no choice but to do this because we don't have the luxury of time saying, oh, you know, this year we're only going to deal with trade or this year we're only going to talk about the South China Sea. It, there's just so many issues that we've got to deal with all at once. When you when you look at this, uh, are, are you struck by all of this just sort of being a subtext to the uh, to the great game revisited in, in 2018, where Russia is positioning herself, the, uh, the the Chinese are posi positioning themselves, and we're just trying to maintain the world order? Is that is that what we're basically looking at here, Gordon? Yeah, I mean we're a beleaguered uh, defender of the international system right now, because you have both Beijing and Moscow coordinating their actions against the United States. Both of them are very aggressive. You know, they've had, um, you know, essentially uh, two decades of um, believing that they could push the United States around. We've had two presidents, George W. Bush and Barack Obama, that refused to defend the international system against the Chinese. Um, and now we have a president who is trying to unteach Beijing some very dangerous attitudes that it has. Um, so this is an exceedingly troublesome time for us. Um, but it's the natural result of decades of misguided American policy towards China. And yes, the Chinese are villains, but we've taught them to be villainous, that they can get away with it. So this is on us. But Okay, well, one thing that I feel like is sort of on the president, though, and I don't want to be too harsh of a critic, but I want to be fair-minded about this. I, I see a president who had his boot on the neck of Kim Jong-un with those sanctions, and he pulled his boot up quickly in response to an invitation to a meeting in Singapore. I, I see a president who had his boot on the neck of Xi Jinping, and it seems that for whatever reason, as we got closer to the, to the, to the G20 meeting, he pulled his boot up a little soon and gave him breathing room the way he gave Kim Jong-un breathing room. And now we don't really have the enforcement mechanism in North Korea. The, 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 the Russians are, are picking our pockets there. The Chinese are picking our pockets, and the Chinese are not taking us seriously either. They're making demands about the return of Meng Wanzhou. Well, how about you stop trading and supporting the Iranians? <laughs> yeah. How about we do a little well, horse trading here? And and, I've, and and are you are you struck by the fact that it was Justin Trudeau that executed the warrant to take her into custody? Yeah, there, there's so much to unpack from what you just said. You know, with regard to North Korea, uh, President Trump had extraordinarily successful policies in dealing with Pyongyang through the middle of May of this year. And then, as you say, we, we let the pressure off. And I think the president did that. And he said uh, at the Ottawa G7 in early June, he was doing this to give the North Koreans a one-time shot to do the right thing. Well, the North Koreans haven't reciprocated. So it's up to the president now to put that pressure back on, because um, they've had more than just a one-time shot. They've had a two-time, three-time shot. You know, with regard to China, um, the president is under tremendous pressure to uh, let up the, um, to, from the United, from uh, elements in the United States to let up on China. And we see this in the stock markets. Uh, so I hope that President Trump will do the right thing on China because, um, you know, at this time, we don't have very much margin for error from making mistakes with regard to Beijing. Because we've had, as I said, decades of policies that have maneuvered us into a position which is extremely unfavorable. As I said, you know, we taught the Chinese to ignore our warnings, and now Trump is giving warnings, and he's got to enforce them in an environment where the Chinese look at him and say, oh, he's just another president who we can push around.
Uh, f final question for you, because this is a development happening today. It's happening in real time as we speak. Theresa May goes into the parliament and says that she's going to delay the Brexit vote. Uh, you know, we're not going to do this yet. She wants to go back to the European Union and wants to go back to some of the capitals and, and see what kind of side deals they can cut, they can do. Um, is she sort of following in that same pathway of, look, the people have spoken, and yet I'm going to still try to negotiate and clean it up on the other side because I'm not all in? How, how, does, how does that sort of fit into this global trade dynamic in your mind? Well, you know, the European Union, for a lot of reasons, uh, needs to be looser. Um, it's just become just much too coercive. And and we saw that, you know, expressed in 2016 with the Brexit vote. Uh, Theresa May is in a very difficult position to unwind this, because this is the first time you have a country exiting the European Union. So I have a lot of sympathy for her. Um, it's going to be hard. Um, she may lose um, 10 Downing Street in the process. But this just shows that sometimes you have to stand up for your own country, and she's in an unenviable position. To tie this all together, does this then represent some opportunity for China or Russia to get involved? I think the Russians are obviously doing whatever mischief they can do. But uh, does, right. does this open the opportunity for China to, to create a little difficulty for us on our, uh, on, on our far eastern flank? Oh, you know, China does this all the time. Um, what China is trying to do is, um, you know, use uh, the and separate uh, Great Britain from the United States, just like it's trying at this moment to separate Canada from the U.S. in connection with the Huawei matter. Um, you know, right now, China's challenging us everywhere. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't envy the position of President Trump, but he needs to defend our interests, because if he doesn't do that, we're going to live yep. in a world that we don't want. Indeed. Indeed. It shows you the difficulties of these international agreements and frameworks, whether it's, you know, whether it's the European Union, whether it was NAFTA, whether it's uh, uh, the Iranian nuclear deal or, or, or the climate accords. You get into some pretty hairy uh, neighborhoods there that, that, that make things very difficult when it comes to doing business. We always appreciate your, your insights, Gordon. Thank you so much for coming by today and helping us understand this. And I have a feeling we'll be talking again very soon as it relates to China. Thanks so much. I appreciate you. Thanks, Brett. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more live breaking news coverage, exclusive interviews, and videos from Newsmax TV, click subscribe on our YouTube channel and don't forget to download the free Newsmax TV app for alerts. Newsmax TV, it's real news for real people.